Hello friends, hope you're doing well and welcome once again. Well, February is here now and that's usually the month where our excitement starts to build up for a new racing season. As you know, the thing, one of the things I like to do to build up my hype for the new season, I like to read books. And that can vary from uh, different topics, whether that's biographies, autobiographies, history books, record books, you name it. I, I love reading them to uh, get me excited and just, just get me, give me all the knowledge I need for when the season finally starts. So for today, I'm going to recommend some of the books I own and uh, go through my thoughts on them, what's good about them, what can be improved. As for you guys, uh, if you want, if you guys want to read a few books and uh, get ready for the new season, um, here are a few of my recommendations. I know that uh, there are several fans who are, you know, are fans of different things in the sport. There are people who prefer to look at the present, who only tend to watch the racing, aren't really bothered about learning about uh, the sport or the drivers. But personally, for me. Learning about uh, learning about the sport, reading the history books and record books was what fueled my interest for the sport. And so, for that reason, I think it's a good idea to uh, share a few of my thoughts on these books. So, if you own any of these, uh, let me know your thoughts on them as well. And also, if you own any more, uh, what would you, what, which ones would you say you'd recommend the most? So, let me know down in the comments. So, my very first recommendation for you guys is James Hunt's *The Biography* by Joel Donaldson. And can I just start off by saying you can probably tell. That this book has been spent a lot of time squashed against my folders and textbooks while in my school bag because that was pretty much the only time I had a chance to read it the first time. So yeah, <laughs> it's it, it was it was it definitely looked better than this the first time I bought it, which is why I tend to buy hard hardcover books more. But uh, as for the book itself, um, I love the fact that it's given the definitive name of the biography because uh, Gerald Donaldson. Uh, I think if I, another biography was written about the man James Hunt. Uh, was written in modern day. I don't think it'll be anywhere near as good as this one because Donaldson has put put out all the stops to find out uh, little little behind the scenes facts about James Hunt's life and his career, um, with uh, yeah with little with little details that uh, only James himself and his family is nearest and dearest would know. I mean, if you if you watch Rush and you 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 look at Nicky Lauda and James Hunt, you think I want to look I want to look further into these two, and uh, this is absolutely the place to look because there is so much more. To James Hunts, then uh, this book is not just a, uh, a look on his career; it's it's his life, really. Uh, at the, the before, the the during, the after, you know, an amazing life uh, captured in a really well by Donaldson, and uh, I don't think it will ever be improved. So, yep, if you want to learn more about James Hunt, read this; absolutely worth it. A joy to read, even though it's not written by Hunt himself, of course. It's it's an absolute joy. While we're on the subject of 1976. The next driver I want to talk about is the lovable but unlucky Australian who was born in that year. Yes, Mark Webber, Aussie Grit, My Formula One Journey, uh, which was released in 2015, which I got for my 16th birthday. Uh, Webber, to me, the greatest student ever was, at least in recent memory. I think uh, had he been in his prime in a different era, uh, not maybe not so much the early 2010s, I'd say he definitely would have been world champion at least once, maybe even more times, yes. So by the time he'd retired in 2013, he had become my favourite because, you know, there was just so much to like about the man, you know, he never really had a, a bad word to say about too many others, he never never, never ticked too many people off, and, you know, he was he was just one of the nicest guys, and obviously, be, me being a Channel 4 viewer, he's an absolute joy for presenting and commentating with the Channel 4 team on their coverage. So yeah, getting this book was an absolute, uh, was inevitable when, it, when I found out he was making one, and, you know, Pretty, pretty decent size, you know, it's pretty much his whole life, not just F1, you know, how he got there, how he got uh, to uh, World Endurance Championship. It's a shame that this has been written the very same year he won the championship, so so we don't actually see that included, which would have been nice. But he, but no, it talks about all the all the trials and tribulations he went through in his career and his life, you know, um, the issues at Red Bull we all know about, uh, issues at Williams, that team, um, his big, his big crash in Brazil in 2014, his incidents with in the bar with Mercedes, you know, you know, so much thrown at him, his cycling accidents, you know. There is, you know, so so much bad luck in here, but also a good reminder of the good times, you know, the you know, Weber's mentality to never give up, you know, that's that that's that that this book not only, you know, goes for all the proves what an amazing driver he was, it just fuels my admiration for the man. Um but also to remind us of all the all the good signs. Of course, like the other one, it talks about the stuff we might not have heard about. You know, also how close he came to being with Renault in two thousand five, and uh, I think we all know how well that team did that year. So <laughs> yeah, 
expect a lot of bad luck in this book. I mean, Weber's bad luck and Mark Weber are two very, very popular combinations. But either way, if you want to learn more about the man, his career, ama an amazing man, an amazing driver as well, absolutely I'd recommend this one. He's got good humour as well as in, in his writing, uh, really well written, and really good recounts of uh, an amazing life and career. Moving to another F1 driver whose personality is probably as famous as their career, here we have The Unknown Kimi Raikkonen by Kari Hotkainen. I hope I've said that right. And also, if you want to have a look at the bottom, the first and the last authorised book on F1 World Champion Kimi Raikkonen. So basically that means this is the one and only Kimi Raikkonen book you will get, and I think <laughs> I think that's good enough reason for why I recommend this one. But also, more than anything else, I'm, the way this is written, it's, it's, a, it's a biography again. Um, from the perspective of someone who had uh, spent a few weeks uh, very very intimately with Kimi, you know, uh, who'd been in close proximity with him, had stayed in his house, had seen him interact with his wife and kids and the people closest to him. And, you know, it like as the, as the title suggests, the unknown Kimi Raikkonen. I mean, that this is literally everything behind the scenes. You know, this book looks way deeper than the things we all know about Kimi. You know, people who say, what you see is what you get for Kimi Raikkonen, and I completely disagree. There is so much more to this man than, than, his, than what he is perceived as when you see him in an interview. Um, and this is definitely the book for you if you want to look deeper into him. And by the way, I haven't even finished this book yet. Let's just get to the page I'm on. See, there's my uh, my bookmark shaped, my bookmark shaped like a Bourbon, which is a biscuit, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so the book is that good. I haven't even finished it yet, but I still recommend it, even though I'm not yet finished. So absolutely a, a very good great. And another thing I'd like to add is it's not one of those books, like some of the others, that might that might have done this on occasion. It's where you say, and then this race happened, where I finished in this position, and then this race happened, where Kimi finished in this position. You know, no, this is all stuff we know. You know, we know we know where, where he finished. We know he won the 2007 World Championship. We know where he finished in 2012, for example. You know, it, 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 it sort of brushes aside the racing part. It looks deeper. It looks in between those races. How he got there, you know, the, the amount of persuasion... Uh, uh, that was that had that that had to be given for it to get to give Kimi a shot in British Formula Three, and you know it's you know absolutely in, like Kimi Raikkonen, absolutely inspiring man, you know, <laughs> quiet on the interview, but you have to look further with you have to look deeper and further with this man. And, uh, this is the place to do it. I mean, the, obviously the only book that will probably ever be written for Kimi about Kimi, uh, unless he decides to write his own. Who knows? We might them sometimes, but yes. Absolutely, definitely recommend. If you're a Raikkonen fan or you just want to look deeper into this man, you want to get a different opinion on him, definitely give this a read. Now the fourth and final book I'm going to talk about today, my personal favourite currently, Johnny Herbert, What Doesn't Kill You. Now of course, for those who probably don't really watch him on Sky Sports that much, you probably just look at his career and say, mm, it wasn't that spectacular, but you, you might be surprised that this is my personal favourite, but trust me, if you watch Sky, you know truly what a wonderful wonderful personality Johnny Herbert is and you know can I just say that name what does it kill you could not be more fitting because in the end what didn't kill Johnny Herbert did make him stronger <laughs> so yeah could not be more fitting he might not have had the most uh, amazing career you know three victories that were all that were all in very very uh, dramatic circumstances uh, you know but generally his career wasn't that might not have been that spectacular but Trust me when you say, it, but believe me, it could have been so different for for him uh, with the events in uh, at this very track of the T-shirt I'm wearing today uh, at Brands Hatch. Uh, his career would have been very different had that accident not happened. And you know, you know, this book is also a reminder of what I love about autobiographies, and that is the beautiful honesty that the that the writers always have. You know, uh, Johnny Herbert. You know, so many funny stories about about him. You know, and. I'd say if it was a you know sensible run of the mill driver who didn't really want to share those stories that much, he wouldn't really share those stories. But and yet Joy does, you know, they like these little like one example uh, when he talked about uh, when he tried smoking for the first time, he got it wrong and ended up vomiting. You know, that's not really a story you want to share, but it's Joy Herbert. That's that's just the kind of person he is. Um, and you know, another one when uh, obviously he had the accident, he remembers uh, getting ready to say oh s word and then. <laughs> But the accident happened so fast that it only got the oh <laughs> in it. You know, it's it's stuff like that. There's just so many funny stories in here. He's just a one a wonderful personality. And you know, I, I, I tend to read this one back most often because, you know, so many funny stories, so many moments, you know, of uh, unfortunate moments that uh you know, he went through uh, he, he did go through quite a lot. 
uh, with his injuries to his foot. Uh, you know, absolutely an inspiring story. And uh, what was it? You know, Damon Hill's right on the back here. I think he was one of our lost world champions, and I completely agree. You know, he 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 had the capability to be world champion, but uh, luck just did not shoot. Just luck just did not fight him in the end. But whatever happens, his personality will shine through, and uh, he'll be remembered for that, and hopefully as a great driver as well. So what doesn't kill you? Definitely my favourite at the moment. Uh, but uh, well, I'd love to see if there are, if there's one that could top this. But so definitely this is what I recommend the most. If you want a driver with personality, charisma. Um, you know, an amazing, a spectacular story, um, a career, you know, all of this is in here. Buy it. Of course, these are most certainly not the only books I own currently. There are actually several I own in, uh, in the cover just behind me. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about them in another video and maybe even get a few guests for future episodes. So, yes, if you want to see more, me talk about even more F1 biographies, if that includes uh, biographies, autobiographies, or even the record books I own, um, I'm happy to talk through them. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.